my dear Aries, this is your love and spirituality reading for the mid-month of September 2018 with me, Queen of Cups Tarot. This will be the last mid-month reading I do for now. Uh, if you ever had felt that you need to be at several uh, locations at the same time, you know my problem. Next month I will have to take this mid-month week to catch up with my bookkeeping, that is kind of six months behind and in November I will have the first week off for a year um, and I really need it since I have noticed I get the sniffles when I go and do my readings. Histamine release is a sign of stress. I'm also booking two months ahead for my clients so that's too long for them to wait so in December I'll be able to book one more week with client readings. I hope you will understand my situation and be satisfied with the monthly readings. I might do some other type of shorter reading to replace the mid months in the future. I'll see what I can come up with for you, okay? So uh, I read for the so signs so in order of most liked videos. So, and Aries, you have really done a great job. So you're second out this this month, this time, time around. Um, uh, you can see the order I read in this time around at the community section of my channel. And thank you all for liking, watching, commenting and subscribing to my channel. I am so grateful for all of your appreciation. So this reading can go both ways. The message is for the people who watch it. So if you cross watch for another sign and recognize yourself as the main person in the reading, just trust your own intuition and you will get the message you need. So for this reading, I will use the Osho Sen Tarot by Deva Padma. It will be a five card spread and I will start shuffling your cards. So when I open your deck here, Aries, I see a maturity in the reverse and nine of swords um, sorrow. Uh, so it, it seems like um, um, it seems like you have a hard time moving on and it's like you are on the threshold uh, to something totally new. Uh, but uh, your ability to process old pain might be in a little bit in the way for you to be able to uh, take your leap into your new life. So it's kind of this that if we if we uh, make a lot of stories about how life has been for us up till now, uh, this always happens to me, and and this is a a route I can't get out. It's the same old, same old, and. Uh, I am not able to make good money for myself. I am not able to have a good relationship. I am not able. So whatever you tell yourself here uh, is, is it's probably just this little thing that's in the way for you to make this new beautiful start. So you just have to look at your thoughts a little bit and, and change them. Every time you want to whine a little bit about something, um, why is there always problems in my love life? And you might want to change it to something that you can find in your love life that you're actually happy for or for something that you have accomplished uh, in your relationships that you are happy for. Uh, so you try to change uh, the route that your energy is taken. Okay, so I call the divine with love and light. And here we have uh, abundance in the reversed together with nine of swords. Um, so it might be that you're dealing with some very stubborn, maybe male energy that uh, is kind of not letting you in. It can be like a little bit a person that's a little bit cold and detached and have very high walls and they don't share their secrets. They don't share um, their innermost like feelings. There's no real intimacy. Uh, so and this has been causing you a lot of pain. It might be that this is you doing this and it's painful. Uh, or someone else has me, might been have doing <laughs> might have done this towards you. I'm thinking many times. Okay, maybe in childhood, um, friends, um, teachers, things when you grew grew up uh, where they really didn't appreciate you, and it was like you were not uh, one of them. Um, and also later in life, this might have rep repeated itself. Uh, so. Uh, what you need to do here is maybe to be less with people that uh, that can't show intimacy. Maybe that's a sign that you shouldn't be so such good friends. If they can't open up to you, if they make you feel on the outside, uh, maybe you have chosen the wrong crowd 
uh, to hang out with, okay? So that might be a way we can start to not feel so on the outside if we, if we stop trying to get love out of a stone, okay? So I called the four archangels in the four corners of the world and we have here turning in to set, uh, together with nine of swords. So it's talking about you processing your pain, all these old stories, just staying with them. Uh, whenever you start to think about, uh, oh, this person did this to me and this why, is why I am in this situation right now because this happened and they were so unfair to me. You just listen to this uh, like your, it's your mind and thoughts uh, that's going on a little bit of a, a trip here. So you can just watch it with your eye, with your soul, uh, all these voices here. And you don't have to be caught up in it. Just get more aware of what you are thinking. Uh, so this is going to help you uh, to, uh, to um, change the course of direction uh, by your, that your thoughts are taken eventually. But first you will start with just noticing the stories. Uh, and you can notice, oh, this is the story. And if I'm thinking like this on a, in a certain routine, of course, it will also manifest in my life eventually because thoughts are creative. Uh, so you just watch it, watch it, watch it. Eventually you will naturally start to change it and you will feel like, no, mm, no, that's not my story. This is what I want to focus on and something nice. Uh, nice things that people have done to, uh, towards us. Uh, we can, if something, if someone is nice towards you, uh, it's not that common that people are telling this as a story over and over and over if they haven't been really surprised with the niceness. But a sad event can be um, uh, repeated many times uh, among friends, for example, the same story coming up uh, this is what happened to me. Uh, so uh, naturally we will create more of the things we don't want when we give them so much attention. So I call the six elements, earth, wind, fire, water, spirit and ether to join us here today and to give us a clear view reading for my dear Aries uh, viewers. So I want my dear Aries to have love in their lives and to find themselves in loving relationships. I also want you to have creative success and to be able to walk on your highest path. Uh, six the dream uh, to your highest destiny and in a voice that's number two it's the high priestess so six the dream six of cups it's uh, the past life and childhood card uh, things that you have been through it's like you get a second chance of to fix it now not something that you have done wrong but how you might have been like not loving yourself enough, enough and not respecting yourself enough. With the High Priestess, it says, give more authority to your feelings and your intuition. Trust yourself more. Calm down, okay? Calm down. Uh, don't be so uh, dramatic uh, about your feelings. Sometimes we can be very scared of them and what they want to say to us. Um, with Six of Cups, it might be love and nostalgia and you feeling uh, very much like tenderness towards uh, someone. And with the High Priestess, uh, just let it be as it is. You don't have to change how you feel. Um, you just have to watch it. You don't have to act upon it either. You can just feel the feelings, uh, watch them and... Um, uh, also communicate them to start to start with with yourself okay I feel this I like this I don't like this I love that I don't love this uh, so you start to admit it to yourself and eventually you can also start to say it towards others so they will get to know you better so it's like you're tuning in to your intuitive forces and becoming more and more aligned uh, with um, you kind of the child that wants uh, came so you're giving a kind of justice to your inner child at this moment when you're starting to uh, dignify your own emotions believing in them and giving them more authority in your life uh, the, the the feeling tells the truth about how things is right now 
It doesn't mean that you have all the information. For example, you can be suspicious of something and you go there with your suspicion and it's a secret and it's eating on you. But uh, with this practice, eventually you will be able to tell the person that this is uh, de that you are dealing with, that you are suspicious of your suspicions and uh, be able to sort it out with that person in a very mature fashion. So um, it's it's um, it's no need to be dramatic. It's just a need to take your feelings more serious. OK, so I will just tune in for a few seconds here. To you and your energy. So, my dear Aries, uh, here is your reading. And you have um, uh, Ace of Cups in the reverse here, uh, inability to go with the flow, to uh, align with your feelings. And here we have for the Miser in reverse, so it means that you are in a transition to from not being able to align with your feelings to be able to tear down some walls. Either you will be able to do this or someone else will be able to do this. You know with yourself, if you are a very open person, uh, this is probably not you. It's probably the people that you're dealing with that's going to be able to open up a little bit more and not be so secretive and uh, possessive uh, of their secrets and uh, uh, their vulnerability and their innermost truth. So this is a process that many people are going through the same thing here. Uh, so they can act very strange at times. <laughs> okay, so this is you right now, your situation right now. And this is your past and this is your future. And this is the past of the situation you have been in or the person you have been dealing with or divine uh, their um, mission with you. Okay, and this is the future of the same thing. So... Uh, here are you now. Um, hmm. I'm thinking that's a song. Either it's Where Are You Now? And I'm thinking that's it. I just heard like a melody together with the words. <laughs> and uh, so, where are you now? Okay, so... Um, the lovers in reverse, it shows that there's some problems in your relationships, that you have a hard time seeing eye to eye with other people. Uh, probably the big thing is that they don't really know you. Uh, you haven't uh, told uh, people how, who you are and, and uh, what you react towards uh, because you want it probably to be, you know, easygoing and not so uh, dramatic or problematic. Uh, but here uh, it can be like a siblings quarrel <laughs> even among lovers instead of holding each other's back we kind of betray each other or want to step on the other to get into a better position um, so uh, when we are like this in our relationships uh, there will uh, not be any peace of mind uh, instead, there will be constant wars and constant suspicions and constant waiting for the other person uh, that they will do something uh, malicious towards you. Uh, so uh, how we can fix this is to start to see people around us more as uh, uh, clients. <laughs> then we can have a more professional attitude. It's like fake it until you make it. And also have less, um, you know, put less uh, things in another person's lap, taking more responsibility for you and your own happiness and how you feel. Uh, so uh, we can ask uh, another person to, for example, comfort us when we are sad. But if they are not able to, we need to be able to take care of ourselves and maybe realize that this other person isn't um, able to be there for us in the way we want to. Uh, so sometimes we want to take a person and make them into something that they are not. And it can be very uh, painful for both them and you if you try to put um, any uh, personality traits on them that they really don't have. If you have met a person that's like the miser card that we saw, the king of pentacles, uh, that's in the reverse, that's much the same. 
uh, if you have met a person like this and you say to them well i want you to be able to you know give me more love <laughs> give me more attention uh, comfort me when i'm sad and they will they will not be able to meet your needs because the only thing that they are focused on is to save their own behind okay and this is not because they are evil it's because they don't have the capacity uh, they haven't grown to that point where they can uh, give another person love so uh, when you ask this of them it's like you're asking a fish to um, climb a tree like <laughs> Einstein um, might have said once okay or I've heard it somewhere okay so this is the past uh, for you and we have totality here uh, so totality is um, one of the big reasons to why we are here on earth we are supposed to meet people that's not like us at all and learn from them and this can sometimes look like this or sometimes it can look like full blood on war okay uh, so uh, you can see on the irritated energy that it's a little bit a situation that could uh, go south in any minute but these people here they really try their best uh, and they seem very aligned with each other. But imagine that maybe one person has one view on the situation and another person has a total other view. Both have the best intentions. It's just that they come from different worlds so they can't really see the other person's needs. Uh, so this is about learning from each other. When you are in a relationship situation, it doesn't have to be a romantic situation, whatever relationship you are kind of like this you have different way of communicating so you can't really understand each other fully even if you are you know uh, come from the same city and the same cultural background you will still have even in the same family there can be big <laughs> issues with communication because with one person says doesn't ring in the other person's ear as what they actually said they interpret it in some other way that's valid for them so it's very hard sometimes to even the most simple communication can be uh, full of misunderstandings uh, so this is something we need to clear out and we need to be more perceptive to actually asking the other person if they explain something to you uh, to kind of repeat what they said so you mean that you want me to go to that store and buy that thing and they say yes exactly and the thing I want is going to have this uh, article number for example this um, or this name oh. uh, so there's no misunderstandings and the same if we are quarreling if someone is angry with you and they are spitting out anger uh, you are just uh, listening to them uh, and uh, you try to uh, listen very hard uh, and you try to sum it up in some way that is the best um, your best a total understanding of the situation what this person is explaining to you and you say to them okay so what you're saying is that you're very disappointed with me uh, because you feel like I never I never arrive on time when you have an important meeting that you will need to go to and I need to watch the kids for example and they say yes <laughs> and then they might say something else and you also do this and this and this and this and this and you say okay so what I hear is uh, that I'm also um, not listening to you on what it is that I need to buy to the house. I just listen to half of what you want me to buy and not all the things. Okay, so um, if the person is done screaming, you can say, well, uh, I will really try to uh, be more on time. It's just it's very hard for me to quit my job in time because I also have a lot to do. But I can at least tell you if I'm going to be in time or not. And when you want me to buy something, I ask of you to text me so I can actually buy these things and all the things, not just the, the few things I remember. And then it doesn't have to be so much of a quarrel anymore. You can solve it by this and it doesn't have to be like one needs to win. Uh, we want to understand each other. Treat your person as uh, your, your client. Uh, be... Uh, polite and try to really understand them on depth and don't take things that they say personally if um, if we took everything that people said personally and think oh I'm such a bad person 
we would be soon down on the floor crawling like this because people are also projecting their bad sides sides on you uh, for example if they oh you're so lazy it can be that they themselves believe that they are lazy and they have a problem with this and they just project it out to you so you shouldn't really take people personally you should want to understand them and make the best of the situation but don't take people personally not even the closest people in your life it's usually something else if they are really upset okay uh, so and here we have uh, the future and it's the dream so we have six the lovers here that's a major arcana card five six and six minor arcana six of cups so this is the past life and childhood card and it says that here you have a chance to do something better so it can be that you are in a situation right now um, that is resembling uh, like a sibling's re uh, relationship that you had when you were younger or some other dynamic relationship that you had when you were younger and, and you are kind of playing it out here together with some someone else. And in this situation, you have a chance to do it better. Not that you did it bad the last time, so now you need to do it better. It's not like that. It's like you have a chance to uh, uh, invite more harmony in your own life. Uh, you have a chance to um, try something different that will work better for you and make you more happy. Uh, you can, you have a, a chance to uh, try some of the new things you have learned and see if this can help this old situation. Uh, the sixth the dream also means that you might be having a fallout with someone and then there seem to be a reconciliation on the horizon. Okay, you will get another chance to fix this. Even if you are not the best of friends right now, there will be opportunity for you uh, to understand this other person better and, and to communicate with them in a way that they can understand you better. Tell them what uh, is not working out for you and how they can help you <laughs> to, uh, to be able to overcome this. So, and that means we need to uh, show vulnerability. We need to open up to a person. Uh, we need to be brave enough to do this and to not take it personally. If they backstab you, <laughs> it's not about you. It's about them, their moral values, standards, their awareness or conscious level. So you don't have to take it personally if they kind of backstab you and do something stupid. Then you can just know, okay, so this person wasn't ready to be uh, a good friend uh, for me. And now I know. So it doesn't have to be worse than that. You don't have to, oh, so now these people are thinking this about me. No, they know you. If you always are authentic with your people around you, they will know you. And if you feel like you need to put someone straight, like this person have told, like, back talk me and it wasn't true you can do that too it's fine and here is the past of the situation person or your divine mission and we have the death here transformation in reversed so it's like an ongoing death uh, something that's horrible <laughs> for a very long time uh, so it might be that you have gone through something a relationship or some transformation situation that has been very horrible and it's hard to let go it's like being in a in a really uh, difficult situation or even an abusive situation but not being able to let go of it so it might be that someone has a hard time letting go of you they have tried to burn bridges with you and leave you behind maybe and uh, run <laughs> but it seems like this was not a success in that case uh, so it might be that love still prevails here even if um, uh, the situation itself might be infected from things that have happened, conflicts that have happened in the past. Um, but since the love seems still be going on here, uh, it might be that this is an indication that this situation isn't over, um, that there's still uh, victories to be won uh, in this situation. There's still um, aha moments <laughs> that will be able to come or you realizing something that will help you for the rest of your life so it's valuable uh, it's uh, it feels very painful but it's valuable okay so you will have good use of it forever and here is the future and we have suppression here so it's a little bit like these two cars are very not the same this wants to 
uh, go and say I'm sorry and fix things. And this one is totally up in their head and refusing to act naturally. So I'm thinking uh, you Aries uh, have probably the most of the Aries here will probably have, uh, you know, have a conflict with someone in the, in the past, but the love survived. So you're ready to fix things with that person and forgive them for what has happened. And um, it doesn't seem this harmonic at all. It seems like uh, you want the best for everyone involved and make a beautiful win-win situation. But this other person that you're with, they are going, it's like I'm seeing a big uh, machine of steel that's jumping like this because it's, maybe it's a tractor. <laughs> uh, no, maybe tractor, I guess it's the name in English. And with the... Um, uh, you know, in the front they can have this <laughs> that they shovel things with and it's like it's down in the road and therefore they can't go forward. So it's big steel, steel machinery. Uh, so I'm thinking it's like their, uh, how they have built their life upon some very strong, um, uh, strong assumptions or uh, policies. Uh, like this is how it is. <laughs> and And it's very hard time for them to to change their mind but they can't really move on either because they are stuck <laughs> and um, they are stuck here you can see all the ropes they are thinking something and therefore they are putting restraints on their body and their natural expression so i'm thinking if this person could naturally express themselves uh, they would probably say um, i hurt like hell and i still love you um, I still want to, to be family with you, friends with you, a lover with you, uh, whatever it is. Uh, and uh, But they can't express it because they are stuck in their old ways. And they're going to continue forward in life like that. And it's going to be very difficult for them. I can feel like a person having a lot of uh, aches and pains, um, tense muscles in their neck and shoulder, legs as well. Uh, so this is a person having a war with their own emotions and trying to make them go in another way than what would be natural for them. Uh, so it seems like you're involved with someone that's equally stubborn as you, but even more stubborn in this situation and very much up in their head. Uh, so I don't see, I see that you have kind of forgiven the whole situation and and uh, you, you haven't moved on, you are forgiven and you still want a solution, but this person is stuck. Uh, so uh, this, they are not ready for a solution just right now. Okay, so I will read a six of six, um, the lover's card for you. What we call love is really a whole spectrum of relating, reaching from the earth to the sky. At the most earthly level, love is sexual attraction. Many of us remain stuck there because our conditioning has burdened our sexuality with all kinds of expectation and repressions. We have repressions there. Uh, actually, the biggest problem with sexual love is that it never lasts. Uh, only if we accept this fact can we then really celebrate it for what it is? Welcome it's happening and say goodbye with gratitude when it's not. Then as we mature, we can begin to experience the love that exists beyond sexuality and honor the unique individuality of the other, which seems what you have been able to do here. Like you love that person even if they are, you know, you see that they are this very stiff person uh, and you still have understanding and empathy for them. Um, yes, we begin to understand that our partner often function as a mirror reflecting unseen aspects of our deeper self and supporting us to become whole. This love is based in freedom, not expectation or need. It wings take us higher and higher towards the universal love that experience all as one. These uh, three things are to be taken note of. The lowest, lowest love is sex is physical and the highest refinement of love is compassion. Sex is below, uh, below love. Compassion is above love. Love is exactly in the middle. Very few people know what love is. 99% of people 
unfortunately think sexuality is love and it's not. Sexuality is uh, uh, animal, uh, instinctual. It certainly has the potential of growing into love, but it's not actual love. Uh, it's a beautiful potential. If you become aware and alert, meditative, then sex can be transformed into love. And if you meditate, divness become total, absolute, love can be transformed into compassion. Sex is the seed, love is the flower, compassion is the fragrance. Buddha has defined compassion as love plus meditation. When your love is not just a desire for the other, when your love is not only a need, when your love is sharing, when your love is not uh, that of a beggar, but an emperor, emperor is actually your card, Arius. When your love is not asking for something in return, but is ready only to give, to give for the sheer joy of giving, then add meditation to this and the pure fragrance is released, and that is compassion. Compassion is the highest phenomenon. So this doesn't mean that you need to be abused by, uh, you know, this tractor thingy here. Um, it just means that you can understand them that, okay, so this is where this person are, is, and they can't really help it. Uh, I can't force them. It's like Khalil Gibran said, you don't go to the a person that is naked and say where are your where are your clothes or to clothes <laughs> clothes ah oh, sorry and you don't go to the person that's homeless and say where are your house that would be rude and um and not very compassionate uh, so it's the same with this person here just because they are stuck like this doesn't mean that uh it's something wrong with them they are just on their route on this circle uh, and there's other things that they know that you haven't learned. Uh, it might be a, about loving yourself and putting yourself first. Uh, be, maybe you need to become a little bit of the miser here, um, put better boundaries, and still, then you can be able to love each other, uh, other people better. Because if you take care of yourself, you are less scared when you are with other people, and it's not going to feel like they are... Um, like um, carnivores going to eat you, uh, <laughs> predators going to eat you, um, you can feel safe because you always have boundaries. A person that can't say, yes, I like this, no, I don't like this, they will be f scared when they are with other people, especially when they are with people that's a little bit um, numb, okay, to other people's feelings and expectations. Uh, so there will be easily be a clash between these two people and they will be angry with each other. But if you can have boundaries and, you know, okay, this person steps on my toe, so uh, I, I won't let that be a, it won't be a continuation of that story. They won't be able to step on my toes anymore. And, and you back off or you uh, give them a boundary or whatever you do to to show where, you end and another person begins. And that's not evil. Uh, it's uh, healthy. And when you do that, you're, you dignify yourself and make yourself able to also give more love to other people, have more compassion, judge them less. Just see, okay, this person are here. I, I'm not judging this. This is where they are. I just accept it with love. But I'm thinking you, you long for this person and it's a little bit problematic since they don't seem to be able to change anytime soon uh, so I guess you just have to stay with the feeling of love and and let it be there maybe it will grow to something else compassion or you know uh, maybe you, if you can love this person that's so difficult maybe you can love many people <laughs> uh, even if they don't think like you or act like you so we have Pandora's gift here We'll try to make it through without starting to um, sneeze. I'm feeling it's coming. So, Pandora's gift. There is a mythic woman, much malign throughout history, whose name means all gifted. Pandora lives within us as uh, our curious nature journeying to conquer chaos, evil, and darkness with the light of knowledge. She is the hopeful voice of our soul that asks the question and, in doing so, triggers the process that brings the answers. Sometimes it's through uncomfortable learning that we find our treasure. 
Pandora reminds us that the process of learning can take us to places that seems like the end of our world. And yet, all is not lost. Even now, the light within you is stirring for new revelation, new life and new adventure. Pandora is all gifted and all giving. Her presence invites you to forgo your belief in judgment. Now is the time to surrender the main misplaced guilt that you may have brought upon yourself or another, some terrible happening. It is time to let go of the shame-based belief in punishment. This is a belief that you deserve to be brought to task over any perceived imperfection or that your natural human journey somehow renders you inadequate. Pandora frees the soul from such torment. This is her gift. The human journey necessarily involves learning to experience. There is no shame in your learning process. Pandora presence is the sign of a new time, a time to swap the notion of inherent shame for the acceptance of inherent divinity. From this moment on, how unstoppable you shall become. Sacred rebellion is happening within your soul as a powerful uprising towards liberation. You are breaking free from the weight, weighty criticism of the world, from the power games that bore you senseless, and from the insanity of sacrilegious uh, priorities in this world. Dare to disobey anything and everything that is not divine. Pandora is the leader of your soul revolution. She defies the vicious judgment of history and all that has been said about her. She shrugs of misery, despair and the weight of the world. To recognize that she is the bearer of the true and beautiful light of peace, comfort, hope and reassurance. With her oracle comes the realization that you too are a divinely defiant believer in hope. Who shall cast off the works of anyone who seeks to torment you. At this shift, as this shift takes place, you shall dare to look within your own being and find the light. You are being put on divine notice from the sacred feminine that there is a talent and ability within you that needs to be acknowledged. There is worthy seed of something beautiful and necessary within you. If you choose to develop and express this seed step by step, it will become an extraordinary light in your life and in the world. So poke your tongue out at the naysayers and turn your attention to the bright hope within. You were born to strut your, so your soul stuff. So, okay. So, uh, it seems like there's something new being born in you. Maybe because of this stubbornness or because you can recognize yourself in this stubbornness. Uh, that um, when we are, when we think that we are not good enough, that we are flawed in some way, um, and we want to be perfect so we can be loved. So therefore, we have to, we have to lock down everything that we think are not perfect. And what you would be able to seem as see as perfect in another person, you would love that quality with them, but they might hate it. They don't want to show tears. They don't want to show vulnerability. Uh, they think that this will be uh, like judged uh, by you, but probably uh, it wouldn't be judged by you. It would be something that would uh, make you closer, uh, but this person doesn't know it and you can't tell them. Uh, the only thing you can do is to show this love and acceptance towards yourself and stop judging yourself and stop judging others. Live and let live, you know, don't judge another person until you have walked a mile in their shoes. Uh, and it's, it's one thing to judge and say, well, you did this wrong. And it's another thing to see the situation from and above and make a judgment call. For example, this person is very stubborn here. They don't seem to be able to communicate with me and, and they just continue their race even if they are not getting nowhere. Uh, so uh, your judgment call might be, well, I still love them, uh, but uh, I can't uh, engage myself in this drama just right now. Uh, so that will be a judgment call to judge <laughs> someone um, like... Um, with this unforgiving attitude is one thing, but to make a judgment call is something else. 
So I hope you will be able to see the difference uh, because it will have a great impact uh, in your life. And it seems like you're very lighthearted right now and you have capacity to forgive and things that seem very serious for you before, like how they did you in in some different ways, isn't that serious anymore. It's like you can understand and forgive. You don't have to let them do it to you again, but it's not, it, it feels like you don't take it as hard as you did before. It, it's, you have started to heal. That's the thing. Okay. So I hope this will help. And for those of you that's waiting for, um, it seems like one person is ready for reconciliation, the other person is not. And you know, if you are ready for reconciliation, you know that the other person is not. If you are not ready, probably the other person is ready. So, uh, you know, okay. Uh, take really, really good care. And um, uh, I welcome you back to my monthly October reading that I will perform in the mid of September. Okay, bye bye.